Okay, pal, so taking a look at you. Now, this school, it's going to be about you, what you want to get out of this, okay? So what I'm looking at is a guy who has got good hand-eye coordination, who, you know, gets it done, okay? But gets it done in a way that I think we could do, I mean, you're a strong guy, and you do a lot of things, and see, see where the face gets a little yeah, it's closed, and guess what? You know, it's not horrible. It is just, it's what you do presently, right? So here's a golf club trying to go kind of straight, right? And, you know, if I hit a shot from there, that club would be somewhere over here by now, right? It'd be disappeared on its journey around me on a, on an arc, you know? So it's it's up to you how much, because if you were 14, I'd say, okay, God, the kid's strong, good speed. Speed's something you can't really teach, okay? You either have it or you don't, and you've got good speed. But I really think that if we focus on refining the, the hands and the club face, that as you get older, were you 40-something? 51, okay. So we're similar ages. I'm 48. You know, when you get older, you're not going to be able to muscle it the way you do now, right? I'd rather you have a swing rather than um, the, the muscular force. Yeah, you see. You see. Okay. Did you? Okay. So that's where, that's where as a coach, I go, okay, guy can hit it. I mean, you're smashed the nine iron's beautiful. And then as we went into the, you know, the less loft, the more unreliable the strikes got, right? So, and that is, you know, you'd be a phenomenal par three guy, uh, phenomenal, but good with the short irons, and the, you know what I mean? But I want to create more reliability with you. Does that make sense? Exactly. Okay. So, you know, here's the low point line drill, hitting the shot. And looking at, you know, face on, there's there's a little bit of an abundance of shaft lean and a bit of a turned right hand and then a splayed out pair of hands. Your hands aren't really unified to where they can sort of work together. They work a little independently, okay? And then when you when you take it back, let me find this other swing here. You know, you'll see that there is a, you know, a very inward takeaway, right? We in golf nerdology, we call these positions in golf swings, we call face on at address T1. Okay, that's position one. Where should I be? You know, so you could play from here, okay? But I would say that, you know, the the, the leading edge and the grip would be it would be in that box. It wouldn't be extended out of that box. You see what I mean? Forward, and I get it. And that's, and that's all good. Yeah. And that's fine, but you know, those elements are things you want to have happen dynamically during the strike, okay? So your P2, when the club comes parallel to the ground for the first time, you know, so there's the face on version of P2, uh, P2 right? Your shaft is very inward. The club head, and then here's the, here's the amazing thing you do, okay? I mean, you got talent because I'm wanting this club head to be over there at this time, okay? And that's okay. I mean, just showing you, you're athletically, you know, you get it done. You know, at the top, we see a club face that's, you know, very, very shut. So this is P3 when the left arm is parallel to the ground for the first time. And I know you got some left shoulder issues, right? And, and it, we see that we see that face very, very close. So your swings, in, and then P4 is just when you kind of run out of, run out of the top. So... Well, sure, there's stuff there. You know, this is right arm retraction. Okay, but the guy that was 62 that played it really, really well didn't look all that different from you here. His face wasn't quite that extreme at the top. And here's what you kind of sort out really well. So you kind of lay it down into a fairly orthodox position right there. You really do. Okay, after what, the, what just you, you went, instead of taking the I-25 from Albuquerque Las Cruces, you took the back road through Alamogordo. But you got there, okay, you got into an orthodox delivery position, okay, so I'll get rid of these squares and get you back to this, okay, what we call P6 delivery, okay. So you're not that not that bizarre here with the exception of your arms being, you know, a lot wider than we'd see with a high-level player. And then an impact, you know, you, you can, now you can really see how your hands are just kind of separated down the grip, right, okay. So the grip changed somewhere during that one second event, which is something that I want to be careful of, right? And then post-impact, the really 
your body behaves well, but your arms are doing some kind of a you're rot you're keeping the loft on the face because you had it so closed in the back swing, right? Okay, so you you're trying to keep loft on it, you know, by fighting it. And you're so strong that you can fight it, okay? And that's what I want to sort of figure out with you is, you know, let's talk about what Mike said with you about the grip. So go ahead and get on the mat for me. You can have a sip of coffee if you want. It's finished. It just uh, finished up there. Oh, you don't need a glove. No, we're good. I have a coffee first. Okay, so get these club condoms off. There we go. Now, let's talk hands, okay? And so Mike might have went, so see some of this awkward wear and tear on here? Wear and wear. A good player, a high-level player, I'm telling you, they're going to they're gonna put new grips on a couple times a year only because they've hit so many balls. But they're, they're only going to do that because the grip oxidizes, not because they have funny wear patterns, okay? So the feeling is if you held a briefcase, you're, you've got a heavy 40-pounder, you probably hold it close to your body. You know, and if, if I gave you one, something that would feel kind of like a briefcase. You know, there's a handle, hold that beside your side, and you would let that arm hold onto that. And see how that strap is very much along, it's across your hand, isn't it? That's not along your hand, right? So what I'll explain to you is if we're going to put a golf grip in there in a similar manner, and the, and the adjustment we make here for the, for the grip is we take this thumb and we let the thumb kind of ride on top quadrant like that, okay? Not dead on top, a, a slight bit to the right. Perfect, right where you have it. I'll get this thing in your hands. So you get the idea of what it's like to carry something kind of in your left arm right there. You got me? So now when I take this arm, I'm going to take it and kind of move it out in front of you, get your bicep to fit on top of your pec, on top of your logo. Are you with me? This is what I do with the ladies, too. They got boobs. You got pecs, okay? The club's perfectly on this, this heel pad that I'm squeezing is perfectly on top of the grip, as though if there was a kind of a mallet and you had to pick it up and you could go, that joint is perfectly in a position to functionally mallet. Are you with me? So that's always a checkpoint to you. So you're always going to think, okay, briefcase, grip is across my hand, not along my hand. Along my hand would be that way, okay? Right. Left humerus and, and bicep on top of pec, arm comes in front of me, that bends and puts my left wrist into a mild extension, a little bend, and I'm in a great left hand position, okay? Now, I'm going to get a pen. You relax for a second. Put two little dots on this, on this glove of yours right here, okay? We're going to put one there, okay? And we're going to put one here, okay? And, the, and this is the important one, okay? Those two little dots, all right? Representing the one of three joints, okay? One, two, three. You probably know the names of them, I don't. But anyway, when this right hand of yours is going to cover up two of those joints. So when you put these fingers on and you put this right hand on, this valley created by this right hand, okay, literally covers, look at this as a chicken leg, right? It covers a good majority of that chicken leg. The chicken leg meaty part right there fits nicely into that right hand lifeline. You got me? Yeah. Awesome. This finger slips in and you cover that up. Now this joint should be in view, but that's okay, right? You just got that. Now here's a reason why you want this grip like this, okay? You hold on to the club and we get these big arms in front of you. Beautiful. Because when I take this golf club, and do me a favor, bend over it a little bit, and I get you in this position back here. I want this arm, this powerful arm, to have something to push on other than the independence of the grip. So do you see how now, do you feel how you've got something there? Good. Before you didn't, okay, you had, you had your right hand just on the grip. The thumb was massively exposed, okay? So now what I've done is I've taken that right hand, I've got it covering that drumstick, a lot of it. The only thing not covered is one random knuckle here. You got me? Beautiful. Good. So that's why we do that. So now that when you get the bend over a bit more, awesome. And then I'm going to take this left shoulder and I'm going to turn you some. This right now, my man, is a beautiful striking position that you could maul it. It is powerful because you've got a right arm and this is what's going to happen from here. There's an ignition, a little 
that happens from stay here. There's a little ignition from you being able to feel yourself go this way. That's a mild little ignition. You get me? Good. So you're going to feel, and then you're going to feel um, that, and then it's all over but the crying, right? So that little pressure, and then that little tiny bit of a rotation, and then all of a sudden, because most of your power, believe it or not, pal, comes from right here. Let me demonstrate. You go stand right there, okay? So, let me have a little sip, sip of coffee here. Okay, so most of the power in the golf swing is right here. So I swing at about 105 right here. Well, if I'm swinging at full speed with a driver, 90, 88, 90, okay? The other 15 comes from this, the ability for my hips to help me move my torso a little bit more. And then this little bit of squat and this tiny bit of ignition. Because it literally is, here is the engine, this little, this little move and then this little move. Those little micro moves are what allows you to do the Audi Quattro Turbo versus the Audi Quattro. You see what I mean? Because this little move of letting your pelvis rotate, which helps me rotate just a fraction more than I could when I was here, agreed? Right? And now, you know, even on my knees, I have ignition from short little knees, right? And hips, right? You okay? But the point is, you know, this little move and this rotation is what turbocharges whatever speed I had on my knees. Okay? But paramount to you is this. Left hand. If all you do is come out of this golf school with a beautiful pair of golfing hands, like I'm talking beautiful pair of golfing hands, to where you can feel now that that right arm has something to hold, to push on. Right? Because here's what's going to, you did, good. You're going to, here's what you're going to feel. This is what your swing's going to look like, bud. Right there. Boom. That's it. All this extra crap you don't need. Okay? So here is my left lat. Go ahead and stand to my left on my target line, give or take. So pretty close to me. Put your left hand on my back, on my left lat. Okay? Good. So you're going to feel this. The left lat getting it going. Okay, and that's over. It's done. So you're going to feel squat and there's a little bit of pivot. So put your hand, put a bit more pressure there, right? So that's a pretty strong force your body can make, right? And then you're going to feel a right arm throwing. Okay? Okay? Good. So give me, sure. So, but you got to get this piece first. And then you get that piece. Okay? So come on, give me good left-hand suitcase grip. And it's not quite that deep in the fingers. It's right there. Perfect. Okay, good. Okay, yeah, it was a little too deep down in the pinky, right? It's not there, and it's not there. Okay, good. Okay. And then on top, right, honk the horn, right? Good. And then you feel like you've got that lifeline covering up that chicken wing or that chicken leg. And there's a beautiful pair of golf hands, okay? Now, go ahead and set that thing down to a ball for me. Now you look like that's so much better I can't even tell you, okay? Now in golf, we call them positions. There's P1, here is P2, here is P3, okay? P4 is top, and I'm going to go to top. We're going to go to left arm parallel, P3, and then we're going to hit a ball right here, P7, P8, P9. And P9 is when the right arm's parallel, and you're a little bit more on top of your lead foot. So P3 to P9, left arm parallel, right arm parallel, Okay? Parallel, parallel. Show me those good hands. Hit a little shot into the net for me, and go. Okay, cool. So we missed it, but come on over and take a look. It's all right. So looking at the hands already looks nine day. Okay, so if all you do is that these three days, you've got your money's worth, okay? So left arm parallel would be there, so we go beyond it. Okay, we don't need to go beyond it. You're going to go P3 to P9, right? That's where you're going to go, because trust me, you're strong as a bear, and all we need to feel from this is 
you letting a little pressure go here, and then guess what? Left lap gets it going. And once that, this is like the first gear in a monster truck. You got to go through the mud somehow, right? Then, because that's the red is first gear, okay? Then green are the higher gears that wouldn't move in the mud. You see what I'm saying? That right arm getting things throwing, okay? And this is already so much better, it's ridiculous, okay? So, so you're very fixable, okay? You know what I mean? It's not even, it's not even close to how much better it is already in 15 minutes. Right. Okay, and now, yeah, and so you're, you're trying to go parallel to parallel, but there's more inertia pulling you to a finish, right? Okay, so you need to feel like it's okay to, what I want you to do in five ball sets is, you know, three o'clock to nine o'clock, P3, P9, right? And that might make a ball go half or 60% or of whatever distance you might get. So your your nine iron slam 150, let's say you think 110, P3, you know, P3 to P9, right? And then second ball, go ahead and hit one, right? Then third ball, P3 to P, you know, P3 to P9. And then hit one, right? But always take a moment to be mature enough to, what did you feel, right? What did you feel? And so we are going to absolutely be unrelenting on this, unrelenting. When you leave my school, you will hold it nicely. That feels better. That feels better. I just felt I, I want this, you know, I want that right hand to have something that it has, you know, not, you're not holding, you know, the grip independently, you get me? These two fingers are still, these three fingers are still on the grip, but I don't want that, you got me? Good. Go to work and send me a Mitesh.